Hello students and welcome to another week where we're going to continue with our go-to trainings from 6 up to 7 p.m. specific time. Today we're going to speak about assembling your team and this is for the class DFM 190 project planning and development. Well, the first thing, as every Tuesday night, I would like to welcome you to this training. Um, for those of you that probably won't, will not be able to join us tonight at this precise time, you can always watch the recorded video on our, um, on the LMS, okay? Um, so again, welcome. Everybody, my name is Professor Christian Hertak, and today we're going to this, uh, speak about assembling your team. So, I want you to take a closer look to this picture and tell me what do you guys see. Look at all the names and all the different positions that all these people work on. This is something that you usually see at the end of any movie. It's pretty much the credits. Notice that there is one person assigned for every single position available for that production in that particular production. This is just a sample picture of one of many productions. that has a lot of crew, crew members working in a production. And that's exactly what we're going to speak about today. We're gonna to speak about the team that is going to be part of your production and is going to help you to make this happen, okay? To speak a little bit about the background and a little bit of the history. Back in time, film, the film industry, as well as television, was born out of necessity. Necessity about generating the exposure of products. Okay, so early the filmmaking was about generating products. Okay, they needed to be able to have a showcase pretty much uh, different products for sale. So when you watch TV, you'll notice as well that there's a lot of commercials, okay? Because it's all about the products, okay? Um, I want you to take a look at the picture next on the right-hand side. Um, that's pretty much the a group of people working in a very famous company, the Ford Company, that was the that um, that belongs to Henry Ford, and um, that's pretty much um, the assembly line in the midst of the Industrial Revolution. Um, that's exactly how they work. There was one person, as you can see on the picture, assigned to work in a particular area, in a very precise this, uh, position. Okay, take a closer look to that picture for just one moment. There was one person to make exactly one thing. So that way, in everybody collectively were able to create cars. Okay, so the assembly line was a model made and specialized to speed out the production. It also works as a way to uniformly practice the speed production efficiently and change a little bit the traditions change the, the pace 
of the production, the mass production. Okay? It is important to understand that that's the reason why the film industry has so many people involved in a production behind the scenes in the in in working in the production behind the scenes in front of the camera and uh behind cameras um but again this is for feature films for big productions productions that has budget of millions of dollars where they can afford all these different uh professionals to work on a set but when we're talking about a uh, college film the story is different we're talking about working with a small amount of money if we have right uh that amount so when we're creating or trying to develop our our film is totally different because as students, um, and I'm gonna go back in time when I was a student, I didn't have that much money. So you are working pretty much with a micro budget um, for your film. You're going to learn through your own experience by trial and error, many things. Okay, when you don't have too much money, you have just a few resources, meaning people, okay, that you can actually pay. You're going to go through burnouts and flakes, and it slowly will build resources, reliable team of collaborators. You're going to pretty much have to find on your own, your own team. Um, I am not sure if you have the opportunity to read one of my comments on the discussion that we have last week, but I, I did mention, um, I did answer to one of the students that when I studied film, it was only me and two other guys. So we were in reality three different students um, from different countries trying to work in our master's uh, in our master degrees uh, and now trying to do our thesis film only the two of us you know the three of us so um at this point you need to be creative you need to find your own people to make this happen my story was uh took place one of the scenes took place in a in a nightclub and i remember when i took the class the professor asked me how am I supposed to 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 find all the all the all the people in in the location? And I say, and I remember I was new in the city. I didn't know too many people back in the days in Miami, and uh, pretty much I didn't have any friends. And um, uh, I was I told the professor at the time, well, I don't know how I'm gonna make it happen, but you know what? I'm gonna make it happen because that was my baby and I want to do my movie. So one of the things that I learned is that when you really want to make something happen, you find the way. You're going to find the way. So when you're starting out, you're probably going to start uh, small, okay? Um, when you have a micro budget, you always have to find the way to pay the people that you really need um, and if you can afford them you're gonna make the decisions to to pay the people that you really need in your film which is a good dp that we're gonna learn very soon what is that and obviously the cast members i did pay my main characters um, on the picture on the right does a scene of my movie or my film because actually we did it in, in uh, with a super 16 camera film camera um its name <clears throat> excuse me the surprise um on the picture you see my um 
the protagonist of, of the of the film, her name is uh, her real name is Karin Farfan. She's Colombian and now she is uh, doing a lot of commercials and a lot of independent movies in South America. And also she's she has been doing a lot of independent work um, in uh, in California. Um, when you're starting out, you also need to keep in mind that you might need to wear a lot of hats. Um, when I did my movie, The, the Surprise, um, I have to produce my own my own short film. I have to be the screenwriter. I was the director. I was the, the person in charge of the casting. Uh, I did so many things and you're going to find yourself in that position too. So don't feel bad. It's good to do a little bit of everything because in the future that will prepare you to become prepared in any single position that, that, that is available in a production. Um, and again, when you're starting out, there's going to be either low or no, no pay at all, okay? It's part of, of the micro-budget of, of a film, okay? <clears throat> well, let's, let's go ahead and start um, um, numbering the different positions on a set. The number one position, and this is, uh, it doesn't have a particular order, um, but uh, I have to say that this is a really key position, is the sound mixer boom operator, okay? As you can see on the picture on the right, um, this is a project where I participated as a production assistant, and I'm going to tell you in a moment what is the job of a production assistant. Um, but I was working as a production assistant and as you can see, I circle for you guys. Um, one of my uh, good uh, former uh, co-workers, um, Charles, he did a lot of movies, including working with Charles Bronson. Um, he's amazing. And he, in this particular project that we did for We Television, uh, we were recording Platinum Weddings, uh, the Miami edition. It's, uh, it was a TV show about weddings. Charles, on the circle, was the person in charge of the sound. And sound is very, extremely important because with no sound, there's no movie, pretty much. If you have a dialogue, if you have a script, with no sound, there's no movie. So... The person who played this role, uh, and by the way, it could be either one or two people, um, but um, this person is in charge of gear, uh, uh, pretty much uh, work on the production, taking care of the sound. It's uh, someone that you that you know that is really good with the with the equipment. And he's so, also someone that you know that will, that will make a really good job taking care of the sound, um, making sure that the microphones are uh, well covered or are well placed in order to capture all the, the dialogue. Make sure that it doesn't show on the, on the actual shot when the when the actual DP is trying to um, do the shot for the subject. So that is very important. Um, the person that do sound also needs to be really good with the mixer, um, which is right here, um, and pretty much balance everything with the, with the equipment. You need to be very careful who's gonna take this 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 role in your production, okay? Um, and it's like it says on on the actual presentation, it is very hard to find. 
because when you don't know what you're doing, when you're touching on the wrong place, um, many things can happen. So thanks, Kathleen. You guys are now working on learning all these things and all these tools, all these uh, equipment. Use them. Don't wait for us to tell you, hey, now is a uh, production time. Let's go ahead and start working on your uh, with your equipment. My best recommendation is to start being curious. Start being more creative. If you have a brand new equipment, go ahead and look it up online if you don't understand one of the parts. If you want to know how can you work better or uh, any type of conditions that you may encounter, like working outdoors, working indoors, Additional information that you find online is always a plus. So whoever you assign in this position, make sure that the person loves to capture the sound and it will make a really good job in your production, okay? Remember that sound is actually one of the filmmaking elements that you must take care for post-production, okay? Let's go ahead and speak about position number two and one of the main positions as well is the director of photography and we call it in production the DP. DP is the director of photography okay also likely the camera operator okay as you can see I'm sharing with you some pictures of productions that I was uh, involved in the past um, on your left you have a picture of um, when I work as a producer production coordinator and writer for the Mikusuki magazine TV in Miami so you see uh, pretty much I was behind the cameras making sure that the shot was correct I was pretty much, you know, it was my story. So it was about a uh, famous artist in Miami. So I want to make sure that we capture the whole scene. So the director of photography uh, works closely with the director of the production and as well with the producer. Um, usually it's always good to have someone with experience um, especially when it comes to film cameras. And even though digital cameras, um, not everybody has the eye and uh, has the knowledge to work with the, with the technology of a camera. So it is very important that you choose wisely who will be that person. Sometimes it's going to be you. So make sure that you learn and you practice as much as you can with your equipment again. Because when you start working in production, there's no time for practice. You need to go ahead and deliver. Okay. Um, on my right, I have a good friend of mine who also worked for the production of the Mikusukis. His name is William Vargas. And he actually worked in New York for many films, independent films. He is uh, very, very um, busy right now in the media industry. Um, doing a great job um, and he's really good with the equipment so um, he was uh, an awesome director of photography that that we have the chance to to work together before so one of the things that that I want to mention is that in order to find a really good director of photography if you happen to have the money to hire someone make sure that you that you do some research or ask to some of your friends uh, um, in school and make sure that, that, that maybe they can give you some a good name of, of a person that that probably works really good the camera in case that you need a DP for your production, you know. It's always good to have uh, contacts and ask because that is exactly what I did for my thesis film. I happened to hire someone who worked before in feature films and in MTV. So he did a really good job. I was very happy with the final result of my movie. Um, but it took me some time to ask 
um, people and make sure that I liked the work of that director of photography. Um, let's see, so director of photography is in charge of capture the image. It's gonna capture your B-rolls, it's gonna capture pretty much the landscapes, everything, all the shots that you have planned out during pre-production, the, the director of photography will be in charge of capture all the visuals for your production, okay? And pretty much uh, he is gonna be the person with the equipment and he's gonna capture the vision of the director, okay? Like I mentioned before, the director of photography must have a really good eye uh, on details, um, all the visuals, everything that is in front of him, okay? And of course, he needs to be very well known um, with the technology and the, 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 the equipment itself. So he also needs to be very, very careful where he plays the camera, the lens of the camera, and uh, cover the camera at all times. Uh, if, if you guys are planning to have more than one location, the DP is in charge of taking care of that camera, okay? The camera is your baby on the set, okay? The camera will capture everything about your, your production. Okay, so moving on to the key position number three, um, we have the digital assets manager. And who, what's the job of the digital assets manager? The di digital assets manager um, will keep track of all the files, okay? When you have to record the same scene several times, you need to make a, a scene one, shot one, you have to repeat the same scene for any reason. That person is in charge of making sure that she or he has all those recordings on a piece of paper. So when you finally have, let's say you have uh, a, good, um, a good take, in, on the notes, the asset, the digital assets manager will make sure that it will she or he will will write on that uh, note on that notebook the good take, the bad take. Let's say that you have a take with no sound; it was a mistake. That person will keep track of all everything that is going to happen in a in a production right now is another picture of uh, mikusuki magazine tv where i work um, in miami and uh, right here we have the digital assets manager she has her paperwork ready and uh, waiting for the dp to start and obviously waiting for the the ladies right here the hostess of the show to start recording. Um, also, the digital assets manager is uh, has to be very good with organization to avoid duplicates, and pretty much it's gonna keep everything in track. Okay. Position number four, five, and six. Um, in your production, you might need an an assistant director, a script supervisor and a producer, okay? Um, the assistant director will be the eyes of the director. Anything that, that the director needs, the assistant director will provide to him or to her. Script supervisor will make sure that every single uh, scene has been recorded, okay? You need to have someone that based on your shot list, based on your breakdown, uh, script breakdown, the person that is in charge of the, of the script, uh, supervising the script, uh, needs to make sure that 
you guys have all the takes for each scene on that script. And the producer, there are many producers producers and there are several different type of jobs for example when you see in a movie executive producer jennifer lopez just to give you an example executive producer could be the person who finance put the money for the production okay or find the money okay usually it's the person who finds the money or finance the production okay in my case i work for the mikusukis as a segment producer so my job was very creative i have to pretty much find the stories i have to write the stories um of the show i need to find uh interesting stories i need to um work with different people, make a lot of pre-interviews. I have to make a lot of phone calls and meet people so to see if during the pre-interview will be a good fit for the show. So the segment producer must all the time find different uh, people to book on a TV show or um, or a, a, any, any type of, of, of sitcom they need to provide the the people needed for the for the production okay and as well as the stories covered on on that segment the segment producer okay so uh, this is something that we can that i can send you a link of the many producers of uh, in a production but i just want to mention those two so you have an idea okay um pretty much um these three people are in charge of keeping everything in schedule they have to track everything through their paperwork um and again they have also especially the producer they need to make sure that they have uh everything in on on the budget they need to have all the permits and they need to have the money and the insurance, everything set, okay? So producer is in charge of pretty much all of this, okay? And the produ producer works for the assistant director and the assistant director works for the director, okay? And the script supervisor, um, the, the script supervisor works for the producer, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the next one. So there are other positions uh, very important on the set. We have the makeup artist, and it's uh, very important, the makeup artist, because it's uh, the person who's in charge of working on the characters or the effects, either if you want blood, uh, wounds uh, if you have to age a little bit your one of your characters uh, some of the makeup artists that I met before especially for film production some of them they just need more uh, experience and they just need to build their resume so you can find easily makeup artists who will f who will work for for a very low payment or no no payment at all you can always uh, look it up uh, in different um, makeup schools if you want to. Um, what else can I tell you about makeup artists? They schedule a lot of time for effects. Um, the production assistant or the grips are very important to me uh, because production assistants will be the people in charge of pretty much working on anything that is needed. Okay, so you don't need someone who uh, needs a, a particular, um, I would say that this person needs to be completely, um, how would I say this? Um, it's, it could be a regular person because a production assistant is just an assistant on the set. If you need someone, to uh, 
pick up the, let's say, the lunch for the cast and crew members, that's something that can be done by the production assistant. If you need someone to send some of the, re- to provide some of the release forms to the cast members, the production assistant will go to the cast and will provide the documentation so they can sign that those documents. Uh, so the production assistant is just an assistant for anything needed in on the set. Okay, and the grips are more in charge of picking up all the equipment. When, uh, let me see if I can go back real quick. When I see equipment, when I say equipment, I'm talking about everything that has to do with the lighting, with the um, lights, the lighting, um, any props, anything that is on the floor, anything that is needed to be moved, especially when you are outdoors, that's something that a grip would do. So usually the grips that I met before in the ma- in the majority of, of the cases, they're always guys. Um, but you can also see women in this in this role. Okay. Um, so just so you know, PAs are a really good position because they are on the set and they are working for the producers, the top people, the director too. So anything needed from the top people, the PA will be there to assist. And it's a good position, even though you you might need to do coffee or run errands, because you're going to be very close to the main key people in the production. So if you have to start after you graduate working as a PA in a production, don't feel bad, because believe me, you're going to be close to the top people and you can learn from them, okay? Never say no to these type of, of jobs, you know, because this is the way you can start showing other skills to the top people, being closer to them, okay? Um, and last but not least, um, we also have the post-production guys. We have the composer, the sound designer, the mixer, or mixer, uh, and the editor who's going to pretty much uh, be in charge of bring to life your beautiful project make all the cuts add the transitions add the music um mix everything together and just remove things that you don't need at all okay making a great crew one of the key ingredients that i will recommend you is to be reliable okay anything that you ask in your crew members and cast members, you need to lead by example. So I would truly recommend you to be reliable and to find people reliable to your production. Um, Try to find people hungry uh, and with the desire, with the passion to learn about film, to work on a film because they just want to learn. Okay, usually young people will be the perfect um, for for these uh, type of jobs that are some of them are non-paid um i want to show you the picture on the right because um i really feel that we, we we had a great team we had a lot of good times as you can see on the picture i mean we were uh, as you can see we we were a diversity of of a team uh teammates i mean we were um everywhere from me from Puerto Rico, I have we have people from the Native Americans, we have Americans, people from Brazil, we have the makeup artists, uh, um, Haiti, uh, Dominican Republic. So we have people from everywhere. And we had such a good time that uh, it's, it's the, the awesomeness of the creative people and teamwork is that we were able to um, collaborate together and put together a really good team. So I'm very proud to work with this production in the past. Um, Also find people that fit in the project, okay? Um, When I was uh, working as a producer, I always was interested in, in working in a production that has a theme that interested me. 
Um, I am, I love arts and I love uh, culture and I love music. So I couldn't be doing something different from that. Um, I couldn't be a, a good producer for, for sports, uh, I don't know, show or something like that. Um, so always find people that you know that could fit in in your project. People that have the same passion that you have. Okay, in your case, you guys can find people who are interested. Let's say that you're trying to make a movie about, let's say you want to do a music video. Try to find people that love music. Try to find people interested in uh, uh, modern music, you know, that they are interested in what you are, are going to do. Okay. Chemistry is extremely important and it's something that, you can only find out um, meeting with them a few times and see if the chemistry is there, okay? And sometimes it's very important to choose people with the proper gear, with the proper equipment. So if you have people interested to work with you and they have their own equipment, that's a plus, okay? That's no brainer. Okay, um, so running the show, um, tr when you're recruiting talent, be nice, be humble, make sure that uh, you provide copies of the project, copies of the film to the people who work with you and for you. You also will need to provide them food. Usually, like I mentioned before, actually I mentioned that on my first week, when you're working on a production set, it is very possible that you work for 12 up to 16 hours. On the picture on your right, we were, and I was younger, I am right here, as you can see. Um, we were working in a music video. This music video actually um, won an award uh, uh, in Canada. So we did this uh, music video for... Uh, um, a band may uh, name Agape. She's the main singer and he's the DJ. And uh, we had a, a, a good, good time producing uh, and recording this music video at the Everglades in Miami, Florida. Um, or actually at the Mikusuki uh, tribe uh, nation. They are a nation within the United States. So try always to have... Um, a team where you can feel uh, comfortable with, um, learn how to be nice, professional on the set, um, be prepared um, for each day of re uh, a recording day. Uh, it is very important that you trust in your team and you communicate clearly your vision so they know how to deliver the job. Um, always encourage them, let them know how good they're doing their job, but overall have fun. Listen, if you cannot have fun doing what you love, then there's something that you have to take a step back and, and, and see if it's, if it's something that, that you can fix, which I think you, you can always do. So Overall, I think that you need to be um, enjoy. You need to enjoy what you do. You need to love and have a passion for for this career. There's no other way to say say it. Um, I also share that um, that uh, if you have uh, if you don't know too many people, there are many ways to find people to work with you. You can put an ad online. You can also visit film clubs. Um, there are many groups on Facebook related to the film industry. You can also do that. And what else? And you can also try to speak with people or students from other classes, okay? Um, Bottom line is that whatever you want to do in life is possible, okay? Just, uh, just have the faith and, and, and make sure that you, you keep uh, growing and learning and, um, 
and just enjoy the process. Enjoy every little single thing you do. Even though things are not going to be perfect, just enjoy and learn as much as you can. Well, I just want to finish this um, training of tonight. Thanking everybody who watched this live. I am not sure right now who is live, but if you are there, um, hello and goodbye. And before I say goodbye again, I just want to read these quotes. I love quotes. So I always like to finish with a quote. And this is a quote from Rachel McAdams. And I love her work. If you've seen um, The Notebook, she's actually the, the protagonist. And she's an amazing actress from Canada. Um, and she said this, uh, during a movie, chemistry is so important. And yet, they just assume actors can fake their way through it. That doesn't always work. So she's speaking about chemistry. Try to find people that you can get along with, that you know that they're going to do a good job in your production. And try to be nice, you know. Whatever you give, you receive. So I hope that this training helped you to give you uh, some insight about the different positions in a production. If you have any questions, please uh, send me an email so we can schedule a phone call and we can talk about it. I hope you enjoy this training. And um, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.